Hi guys and welcome to Fly Tying with me, Telis Katsuganos, and this is episode 12. And unfortunately this is the last one, uh, not forever, of course not, but for this season or this period. I'm gonna come back most likely next winter with more fly tying, maybe a little bit in between as well. And then we are soon also gonna start uh, tips and tricks, which is gonna be more and more frequently now during the spring and summer. Everything from casting to how to tie a knot, uh, what to pack when you're going somewhere, etc. etc. So I hope you watch those as well. In uh, this episode we're gonna tie what is in Scandinavia at least a very very famous fly. It's called Den Vanlige, which is the usual. We have tied a ver variation of it a few episodes back called the usual dark and the usual light or the usual original uh, is done with uh, a little bit silver doctor blue and fiery brown instead of the black. Uh, and I have a couple of variations which I'm going to show you and this is a I would say it's a typical uh, fly for uh, PD, light PD waters that has that almost like uh, tea color or cognac or something. You, you have that small tone of copper or brownish but it's still clear. Uh, if you have those conditions, especially if a little bit of sunshine is coming out, this fly is amazing for those conditions. Uh, and it's been a favorite of mine for many many years, uh, especially in one of my home rivers, Öreshil, Elven, Öreshil River. Uh, I caught my, I think, my five first salmon including a May salmon uh, with that fly. So of course this is a fly that should be in everyone's box. Same with the other ones we've been tying so far. But uh, I hope you have enjoyed this season and if you have any requests or uh, want to see some specific fly for next year or next winter, please send me a message or a comment here and I will try my best to satisfy your needs. But I think we're ready to do the last episode of fly time. For this fly I will use uh, clear or uh, you can also use fluorescent red uh, tubing and copper or gold depending on what you prefer. Uh, I will use copper because I prefer using uh, the dark fire brown as the top wing instead of regular fire brown. There, as you can see there is a difference. Uh, and I prefer having the, the dark uh, end wing or top wing. Uh, but of course I have those super light ones as well. I'm attaching just beneath. As usual I'm not tying anything on the metal because I want it to be uh, as clean as possible for a good sinking effect. I'm gonna start by using dubbing. Olive gold has a very nice uh, mixture of colors, a little bit of red in it and suits this fly colors very good. Spinning it around a little bit in my fingers, then I'm putting it here and a few laps. You can see it stops moving, then it means it's stuck already. Then you fold this over and a few laps in front. Maybe want to do some small adjustments here or you just leave it as it is. It depends on what you personally like. I want to take a little bit of this off. Okay, now we're going to do uh, the wings. And as usual when I'm tying with fox hair, I am tying it reversed, which means it's going to be tied forward and then I'm folding it. And in this situation we're going to have yellow in the bottom and orange in the middle which means when we're doing the reverse technique I have to put the orange one first because it gets opposite when I'm uh, turning it over of course. And I'm cutting that off removing a little bit of the excess hair I'm not making it too bulky and taking a little bit of those fibers out looking for that natural taper and I know I want to have the fly about yay big. That means that this wing should be something like this. And I'm cutting and adjusting a little bit. I'm 
There we go. And you can, depending on how long this is, you can also adjust the length by pulling here. If you prefer to do that. And then attach it. Cutting that, cleaning that a little bit. Don't want too much left there. Now take the yellow one here now. And cutting that off. And this one should be shorter, of course. So I am removing a little bit and cutting here. It's good if you have shorter hair, but if you don't, uh, you have to do what I did now is to adjust the length a little bit. Most of the times it works fine, but if, if you have too long hair that you're trying to make short, it, it, you will lose so much hair to be able to create a good uh, looking wing. So you will save money by having uh, more, actually. Okay, make sure that that is relatively straight on top on each other, like so, before you fold it backwards. There we go. One, two. Should be enough. For now, at least, we're gonna keep wrapping stuff on it. Yeah. I'm gonna add one strand of gold uh, tinsel flash. It's similar to flashable. You can also add that in the bottom or in between the first two wings. Now I'm adding it in the middle due to the fact that dubbing works of course, as a flash, due to the fact that it's pretty long fibers. Yeah, now it's time for the hackle, and the usual light, or the usual, has blue, or silver doctor blue, or kingfisher blue, depending on uh, a little bit how dark you're gonna make it. I'm gonna use silver doctor blue, either rooster for those very slim flies, or I use rooster cape or rooster saddle. For those flies that is a little bit more filling, I'm using soft tackle patch. And this fly is, I would say, a relatively standard taper or dressing that I'm making now. So that's why I'm using the soft tackle instead. If I would make a real fine uh, water, uh, fine weather, low water fly, uh, which is very, very light dressed, I would use the rooster instead. I'm trying to find here a little bit, adjusting, pulling that back. There's the just uh, attachment point. Here's my feather. You see the natural bend. It's convex, which means that should be facing me when I attach it. On that ugly hump there. And then make sure to really pinch it just beneath, like I did there. That makes uh, the hackle uh, sit way better. And then you take your scissor and open it. Do not use the sharp cutting part using the other inside here to duplicate the hackle by putting it towards it and just slowly there we go for every uh, wrap you do make sure to pull back pinch release then you can see that more or less all the fibers is really being uh, in the perfect angle or shape Re Release and then you reverse your grip and now in the end here. I'm taking just a, a quick left hand Securing and then I'm locking it with the regular wrapping Okay, I will now just quickly show you how it looks with The lighter hair Like so. Looks very nice in my opinion, of course, especially with this uh, light blue, silver doctor blue. But as I said, I personally prefer to have a more distinctive uh, contrast between the orange and the fiery brown. That's why I'm choosing the dark fiery brown for this fly, because I want to have more contrast between those two wings. Pulling it, pulling away a little bit of the excess here. Making 
looking a little bit where I am at. Finger and thumb, slide that backwards to create a little bit more and better taper here. There we go. Measuring that. That looks good. And then I'm cutting. Pop. And as usual, I'm tying this reversed. Makes the fly stronger. Uh, and you have the benefit here of totally clean in the front. I'm gonna take a little bit of that off. It's a little bit too thick in my opinion. The only negative thing about this, uh, it doesn't really work with stiff materials and of course you lose a little bit of the length of the hair due to the fact that it gets folded. So if you have a limited length of your, your hair pieces, you might need to tie it uh, normal, just adding it flat on top. And of course this uh, technique makes the head a little bit larger, but as you can see, this is not a large head I have there. Okay, that's the usual. Uh, and then you have the usual dark we tied in episode 5 with the Willy Gun. The difference here is the blue hackle and the fire brown top wing, otherwise it's a very similar fly. And you can choose to add a jungle cock feather or not. This one I will not. I prefer it like this actually. Then I'm adding a few laps here and cut that off while it's still not cured. And then you add those few extra drops to make that head look better. And of course, if you want that head to look really good, you can put varnish on it or uh, UV glue. But this is definitely enough to go out fishing. And as I said, this is uh, definitely one of my favorite flies over the last 10, 15 years. And it works really, really good in, uh, well, in most Sam rivers, but definitely it is a typical uh, Swedish fly for those waters that we have. Tea color, peaty, uh, a little bit like, Mm. Uh, oh, brownish waters. If you want to, you can in the top wing here also add a strand of copper flash if you want to get that a little bit flashier. Especially if the fly gets a little bit larger, I would add an extra strand here. So there you have it. The usual uh, fly. A very, very good fly. Famous in the north of Sweden and uh, you should definitely have a few of these if you ever come to the north of Sweden or well any other river that has that tea color this fly will definitely uh, give you good action. I hope you enjoyed these 12 weeks and uh, we will soon be starting with our tips and tricks that's not just fly tying. I hope you tune in on those and we will definitely be back with uh, more fly and tying videos uh, in the fall unless we are starting early we'll see uh, thank you for these weeks and uh, let me know if you have any questions or want to have some special requests or feel free to contact me thank you for watching